when we're talking about bilateral uh, relations, we have uh, on Zoom, Mr. David Hardy. He is a member of the board of directors of British Kazakh Society based in London. Um, it's a nonprofit organization that supports bilateral relationship in trade, investment, culture, and education. But uh, why is it important to have David on this particular event today? It's because British Kazakh Society, and I saw that you're mentioning, uh, Annie is also mentioning this society on their website in terms of education. You're advocating for different educational initiatives in um, Kazakhstan, uh, in areas of geology, processing, processing industry, and so on. Uh, please tell us more how you see it. What are your proposals? I saw your presentation, but I cannot say that I understood it fully. So maybe this is a, a good opportunity that you present it and, and explain it to us. Nadia Shida, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for inviting me to this excellent event. I have a few slides, but those should come later. I'll say when those should come on. Uh, you've said something about the British Kazakh society. And in the main, the society focuses on things like oil, gas and renewables and mining. And education is quite a recent um, uh, development. Membership includes major organizations covering all these areas and leading universities in the UK and in Kazakhstan. This year alone, the society has held online events covering hydrogen and the role of industry and universities, energy security and source diversity in the Caspian region. And I spoke at the UK Kazakh Intergovernmental Commission, which took place in London, where the focus was on collaborative links between our universities with a significant emphasis on clean energy. And at such events, <clears throat> we discussed a pilot using solar power to produce green hydrogen in Atirao in Kazakhstan. This is then used in hydrogen fuel cell powered shuttle buses. The next phase of that pilot is to expand and build a distribution network of fuel stations. Those stations will recharge battery electric cars and resupply fuel cell vehicles, creating competition between those two sources. Another pilot creates blue hydrogen using wind power and the cryogenic capture of carbon dioxide. Transportation, as uh, many speakers have said, transportation of hydrogen was identified as a potential problem with suggestions that this fuel may be best used locally. But, and this is the key thing, all of our presenters from these industries without exception said that these complex processes require many well-trained staff at all levels. They stress the need for collaboration with university and technical education to ensure the workforce has the necessary knowledge and skills. As well as having a well-trained workforce, they all identified the need for society as a whole to be aware the public need to be involved and buy into this change. With hydrogen, solar and other energy sources, there's a danger that people, including those working for the government sectors, push things forward too fast. We cannot depend on one technology. Again, as many speakers have said, and as we see throughout Europe, the motor industry, for example, is looking at various alternatives right now. Much more research is required and other complementary energy sources will almost certainly be needed. Kazakh universities are increasingly engaging in such research. Importantly, an eminent Kazakh professor is vice chair of the United Nations Economic Commission for, en for Europe Committee on Sustainable Energy. Education and training are also vital to ensure that Kazakhstan has the research skills and the ability to transform research into commercial reality. Commercial exploitation also means adding value where possible in Kazakhstan. With wind turbines potentially covering an area in Kazakhstan half the size of Belgium, large numbers of technicians will need to be trained to construct and maintain this infrastructure. First slide, please. There is and always has been a need for universities, government and business to work together. This is about technology transfer and the commercialization of research about the development and exploitation of new partnership opportunities. 
All of this requires an enterprise culture in education. It's about the skills student needs, students need to generate ideas. It's about being creative and innovative, confident and energetic, risk aware and decisive, communicative and collaborative, and versatile and determined. Graduates need to leave university or technical education with the capability to make proactive, positive, and responsible contributions to society. And universities have a major role in smashing the technological barriers to clean energy developments. You've heard from others of the vast natural resources in Central Asia and the exploitation of those requires cooperation and partnership. Recently, President Takaya for Kazakhstan stated that to decarbonize and build green economies, we need partnerships. And British universities have formal links across Central Asia and the Caucasus. Many Central Asian students study in the UK. The British Kazakh Society and the Cavendish Laboratory at the University of Cambridge are collaborating with the Kazakh British Technical University in Almaty with a three-year grant from the UK government, we're piloting a model to develop joint laboratories for basic science and industrial services and the necessary training of key staff in Kazakhstan. University College London and the Natural History Museum in London are also involved. Next slide, please. The center will provide laboratory... Ah, uh, you <laughs> There's, uh, there's one missing that I, I sent later, that's unfortunate. But the centre will provide laboratory services, certification, business consulting, foreign direct investment advice, intellectual property advice, and professional training. Other UK links include those of universities in northeast Scotland, connected with the oil and gas industries. Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen, for example, which is doing much on transition developments and also working with BP on hydrogen. Experience over eight years of hydrogen powered commercial vehicles in Aberdeen is an area of development where future collaboration may be considered. Many hydrogen and renewable projects are currently underway in Scotland with which links are developing, developing and Partnerships, uh, as others have mentioned, are critical with this. And through the society, we're encouraging, enabling and facilitating those links, training up staff, research level staff, uh, through to technician level staff, and uh, not directly involved ourselves, but acting, uh, the British Kazakh Society effectively acts as a, as a catalyst to help those partnerships develop. Back to you, Nadia. Um, thank you, David. I also saw. Is that the, is that the end of your presentation now? That is yes. Uh, That's uh, it. There was another That's slide it. which was sent, but it hasn't been included there. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. Can you can you maybe uh, say uh, what was on that slide? I, I I briefly summarized it. It's mm -hmm. uh, the center we're setting up with British government funds, and this is involving Kazakh British Technical University with the. Cavendish Laboratory at the University of Cambridge is a, a pilot setting up laboratory services to test various minerals and uh, other elements, certification mm -hmm. of various processes, uh, business consulting, and th this is, uh, so, so uh, if I go into a bit more detail perhaps, and laboratory services includes microscopy, surface analysis, chemical analysis, mineral identification, soil and water quality analysis, biofuels testing. If we look at certification, that's about the environmental and legal licensing, product and process certification. Then in the business consulting area, we're looking at process monitoring and quality control services, providing and interpreting key product market or competition data, and ad advice on business planning and product and market development advisory work. Uh, foreign direct investment, looking at technical and business analysis of potential investment opportunities, Intellectual property consulting, looking at identification, analysis, patenting, commercialization of intellectual property, 
which is still a, a major weakness uh, in many universities. I mean, America leads the way without exception there. And professional training, bespoke business, science and office administration classes to enable those various functions to be carried out by uh, local people. Um, thanks, David. I think that uh, not only the Great Britain, but also other European countries are thinking in the same way, because if we look at the materials that the Kazakh embassy um, gave us this morning, we will see that um, German president also um, opened some educational facilities uh, or educational programs in terms of uh, uh, cooperation of Kazakh German Association. Um, so obviously this is a, a broader problem that, um, or um, let's say an issue that Kazakhstan is trying to, uh, to solve with, with uh, different countries. 